Y es porque le quiero pedir en público de que investiguemos a todos los que están acá. Para atrás y para adelante. What's up, guys? Bowtie Owl here. I came across another interesting video of Nayib Bukele, the president of El Salvador, who brings everyone in from the executive branch, plus the attorney general, and then tells them they're all under investigation for bribery and stealing. Obviously, his reaction and their reactions are quite insightful. Today, we're going to break that down from a body language perspective, but make sure to stick around to the end where we go through each person's reaction and try to tell if they're guilty or not. As always, make sure to give the video a like, subscribe, and go check out my X page. It's full of great body language content that I put out every single day. Let's get in the video. Como pueden ver ustedes todos, los que estamos aquí reunidos son parte del ejecutivo, del órgano ejecutivo, que es el que el del cual yo estoy encargado, a excepción de una persona. Es el fiscal general que está aquí, él no es del ejecutivo. Y está acá por una razón bien sencilla. Y es porque... Okay, so right before President Bukele drops his bomb, let's start from the beginning. And we see him leaning forward. His hands are in front of himself, guarding his torso, sternum area. And you see a lot of fidgeting with his hands. So you see fidgeting with the pen, you see fidgeting with his, hand, his fingers, and you also see fidgeting with the mic itself. And you can really see, if you scroll back a little bit, that he's really trying to minimize himself or make himself smaller. And this is a normal reaction as he's about to drop this gigantic bomb on his cabinet that they're being investigated, right? It's big news. It's not surprising that he is a bit nervous and, and puts his guard up. One thing to pay attention to as the video plays on is as he delivers the news, we see this tiny little smirk come across his face in a short moment. He's obviously delighted to be delivering this news and whether he knows that there's bad people in his cabinet or maybe specific people, or maybe it's a weight off his shoulders. It could be both, but pay attention and see if you can see it. Le quiero pedir en público de que investiguemos a todos los que están acá. Para atrás y para adelante. Yo me imagino que pues no, no hay ningún problema, ¿no? Hay una persona que me dijo una vez, mire, y tú no, 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 no le temes a la muerte. Coming up shortly, we'll review each one of these people as there are some interesting reactions right after President Bukele's speech. Yo le dije, no, pues claro, nadie se quiere morir. Yo no me quiero morir, pero yo sé que me voy a morir algún día, como todos. Si hay algo que no se puede escapar es de la muerte. Todos los que estamos aquí en, pues, en 100 años, pues, no va a haber nadie vivo. Nadie. Ninguno de los que estamos aquí, ni más probable es que. So he's dropped the bomb and now we see him open up with more expansive gestures. His chest starts to open up. He sits up straight. A smile comes across his face, almost like a huge weight has been lifted off his shoulders. This tells me he's been thinking about doing this for a long time and he's almost dreaded the event. And now the gorilla is off his back, so to speak, and he's relieved the message is delivered. His delivery, though. I'd argue wasn't that great. So instead of looking directly at the people he just delivered this news to, he's looking at the attorney general. He wasn't minimizing himself during the delivery. And there's not much intonation or pauses before his delivery to really let it sink in. Could I do better? Probably not before you guys jump all over me, but it's just something I noticed. Nadie sabe cómo se llama el papá del abuelo de uno. Pero... Hay algo que yo sí le tengo miedo, y es a dejar un mal legado. Y hay presidentes, unos presos, otros fugitivos, pero la mayoría son recordados como ladrones. Yo no quiero ser recordado como el ladrón. Entonces yo no robo, porque no quiero ser recordado como el ladrón o el corrupto. Pero hubo un presidente, el presidente Duarte, que la gente decía en ese entonces, el presidente no es ladrón pero se rodeó de ladrones y en algún momento representó una esperanza para, para el pueblo salvadoreño. Pero si acaso es verdad que él no robó, qué tonto fue, porque él era la esperanza del pueblo, no tocó un centavo y manchó su legado por rodearse de ladrones. We then get two moments where he scratches his nose. The first is when he's telling the story about dying. The second is when he talks about President Duarte and there being a time when he offered hope for the Salvadoran people. 
Now, facial touching is often a manifestation of anxiety, and nose touching is often attributed to a higher frequency of lying, but not always. But the nose touching associated with deception is almost always a scratch, a touch, rub, or a flick. Here we see a pull or a pinch. When the nose is pulled or pinched between the thumb and forefinger, it too indicates anxiety, but more specifically, it signals a dialing up of alpha qualities. So the psyche recognizes the need for an upregulation to stronger, more assertive qualities, and the action of this manipulator adapter pacifier helps us to do so. It's analogous to a slap in the face or a splash of cold water causing one's emotions to be almost jump-started and redirected. And what this set of nonverbal signs tells us is that President Bukele was feeling the need to be more assertive and upregulate his alpha emotional tone within the context of the giant bomb he just dropped on his cabinet. Entonces a mí no me va a pasar eso. Yo no voy a ser el presidente que no robó, pero se rodeó de ladrón. Pero que me recuerden como el presidente que no robó y que no dejó que nadie robara. Y al que robó lo metió a la cárcel. Ya hay un par que ya están en la cárcel. Now he says, that won't happen to me. But notice what he does with his hands. He wipes down the length of his thigh. This behavior is highly consistent with withheld or partially disclosed information. And then he adjusts himself in the seat and finally adjusts his glass, presumably without drinking it. And that's kind of the end of the video. So we don't see more. Basically, what this tells us is he wanted to say more here, but opted not to. And in this analysis of President Bukele's body language during his significant announcement, he initially shows signs of nervousness and caution, likely due to the gravity of his message. After the announcement, you can see smiles and relaxed posture, suggesting a sense of relief at having shared the news. His gestures, such as touching his nose, adjusting his posture, hints of anxiety and a need to assert control, the varied reactions from his audience reflect the impact of his statements. Overall, this breakdown shows Bukele managing personal stress and navigating the power dynamics involved in delivering significant news to his cabinet. Now, let's look at a few key people's reactions at the moment he delivers his news. But first, put yourself in a guilty person's shoes who had just received this information, and what sort of body language would you expect to see? Me personally, I would expect somebody to be closed up, any body language associated with anxiety, some anger maybe. What wouldn't you expect to see? I wouldn't expect to see somebody relaxed, open body language, smile, happiness, etc. So I'm not up to speed on who these people are, and I apologize in advance if I get titles wrong. It's not intentional. Going through the people, I assume that that's a security or a bodyguard in the back, so we're going to ignore him. The first is the general, and at first glance, he's ice cold, and I would say that he's holding emotions back, especially because he looks like he's clenching his teeth or his jaw. We get a glimpse of him before this, and his demeanor is about the same before the news was delivered. And this is, if his demeanor had changed to this from something else, then I'd definitely be suspicious. The jaw clench is also suspect, but he's a military man, so I'm not convinced that he's done something wrong here. Same with his partner next to him. It's a little bit of a softer face, no signs of anxiety or nervousness or anger. The lady is sitting back in her chair, pretty cool and calm. I don't see much with her here. And same with this general. Now, let's look at the three in the back. We have this first lady. Her hands are propping her chin up. She's focused. There's no worry on her face. She's probably okay. But let's have a quick refresher on facial touching with a focus on the guy with the man bun here. The most common cause of facial touching is anxiety. Certainly, there are many reasons for anxiety, but when touching the face, particularly at times of specific point and fact statements or when answering factual questions, the probability that deception is being attempted is very significantly elevated. The itching that we feel on portions of our face when a lie is told is very real. It's brought about because of micro, neurochemical, and vascular changes, which in turn occur as a result of the anxiety which arises when a lie is told. You can see stress on this person's face via a clenched jaw. He's looking down, not maintaining eye contact. His hand is touching and covering the front of his mouth. So what do you guys think? This is a short snippet of this person, so it should be kept in mind that there are many things that could be going on here. 
Me personally, seems suspicious. Moving on to the next guy, he looks a bit stressed, but we can't gather much detail. He's a bit blocked. The guy next to him is leaning forward, very interested in the conversation, and the next guy has no expression. Now we get to another good part. So working left to right, we'll start with the lady. She has RBF, resting bitch face, but that's about all we can gather. She's stone cold. The next guy has a slight suppressed smile on his face, and I think he knows that some people are in trouble here. It's not him, but uh, some people he knows are in trouble. Let's focus on this lady here. So we see a head slightly tilted. She's got a lateral lip purse. Her eyes look saddened to me. And the tilted head tells us she has a critical, quizzical mindset, and the lateral lip purse conveys an open and non-secretive emotional tone. What that tells me is I'd say that she knows somebody is in trouble here. It's probably not her, but it's probably somebody close to her. Moving on to this guy. He has an expression of both subtle content and subtle disgust. Arms crossed tightly is a profound and classic sign of defensiveness, related anxiety, Shoulders hunched, which is called turtling. We see this posture when people are uncomfortable, have low confidence about themselves or about a topic. You may have insecurities or feel weak and powerless, ashamed, or carrying any other negative emotion. This guy is probably be the first guy I'd investigate. The next guy is leaning forward, not a worried or angry expression. He's probably okay, and we'll skip the rest. So I'm curious what you guys think. Who is in trouble? Who's getting away with it? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, show your support with a like. Make sure to subscribe. I put a video out like this every single week. And lastly, make sure to grab yourself a free copy of Read the Room. The link is in the bio.